In 2007, the DCSF carried out a major piece of qualitative research on pupil progression, including a report on what great progress looks like in Key Stage 2. Expert advisors from the department visited 20 schools with outstanding rates of progression to find out what lies at the heart of their spectacular improvements. What characterises these schools is they have high expectations of the children, they don't accept excuses like, oh, well, when you look at the estate, we can't expect it of those children. They expect every child, regardless of background, to succeed. The report looked at a number of leadership, school culture and policy areas, as well as assessment. In this programme, we look at some of the common features of teaching and learning and the curriculum. The report refers to all the participating schools. Here, we draw on illustrations from one of them. William Ford Church of England Junior School in Essex is located in the centre of a large housing estate with high levels of social deprivation. Around 65% of pupils enter Year 3 at Level 2C or below. In 2007, 93% achieved a Level 4 or above in English and 98% Level 4 or above in Maths and Science. There's not one factor that's responsible for the children's rate of progression. Lots of different things come together and as a whole produce outstanding results. I think the quality of teaching is very important. We have a lot of very highly qualified, very experienced and expensive staff. Our TLR structure at the school is very top heavy. We maintain high levels of teaching by keeping our teachers, our turnover is very low and that enables us to produce consistency and year on year steady progress. As you know, yesterday we started looking at estimating and today... Alan Robinson teaches a year four maths lesson. Do at the beginning of today's lesson is use estimating. His lesson reflects some of the common curriculum and teaching and learning features that were shared by all the schools surveyed that were making great progress. The word estimate we talked about yesterday. Can anybody remember anything about the word estimate? We use information that we already know to make uh, approximately what it could be. That's a very good answer, thank you very much. Well obviously the lesson was part of a unit of work that we've been doing um, and so it would always be informed by the lesson before. So the first thing is that the starter is normally related to the lesson that came before. Show me your answers. Well done, well done. Having a look around. Should we try another? This one's a little bit harder, don't worry. If you can't keep the pace up a little bit so we can keep the children working quickly. Florence, which one do you think is the correct answer? 352 because 3 times 1 is um, 3. I always try to make sure that the lesson is well signposted and that's something that in this school that we try very hard to do. And you've done really well in that starter to show me that you remember what we were doing. Now today we're going to continue to be learning to use estimating strategies but I'm going to add something to it. Because the teachers are always speaking really clearly so you can hear every word, so you just understand what um, you're doing. Now, I'm going to suggest to you that we could use our brains to work out how we can estimate this. Can anybody think of a strategy that we could use to estimate what's in here? Sam? Um, well, we could probably think about... Um, you could probably think about how big they could be. In the We're trying to get the children to explain to each other using their reasoning and that way they can actually be a, an active part of the learning process far more than they would be if it was always the teachers explaining to the children. So we could measure the sweets and measure the jar and do that. That would be a very good strategy. I'm not going to do that though. I think it would be a bit complicated but I think it would be a great strategy. I would expect the children to know that I'm very happy with them making mistakes. I'd rather them know that they can take a risk, they can have a challenge and have a go. I need to know now if I'm going to estimate how many are in there. What information would I need to know, Femi? You will know that from one of the sides all the way back from the beginning <coughs> it's all the same. Mr Robinson doesn't tell us the answer but he um, gives us clues and stuff how to do it. Why do you think I've written 30 multiplied by 2? I think you put 30 multiplied by 2 because Miss Short wanted... We don't want the children to say um, one-word answers. Make sure the children speak in complete sentences. Yeah. Just put 30 down, there only be one for each of it, so you had to double it to have twice as many. Well done, that was a correct answer. So, we've actually worked out that, yes, there will be enough. In fact, there's probably going to be more than enough. I'm sure there'll be some for me as well. I think maths can be very exciting, can be very fun. You've got to search for clues, <coughs> and you've got some different problems, and they're in your brown envelope. <laughs> Can you help me 
So the song is about five minutes. A prayer is two minutes. It's five or two. Seven. Two times seven is fourteen. Seventy and forty equals eighty-four. And we do as often as we can present the maths in real life situations using and applying mathematics as one of the key strands of the new national framework. By putting it into the real life situations, it made it accessible, it made it interesting, it made it fun. They're all doing the same learning intention. Um, the partners were not necessarily from the same ability, so they're able to support one another. You didn't look at that part. We weren't paying attention. If there's someone like Sam or Danielle sitting next to me, I'd ask them for a little help. Can you use any estimating strategies to help you do this? Uh, yes. Work out how 31 times 2. As we're working on the activities, I would be going around the class and I would focus in on children that I felt needed a little bit of help to get themselves started. Which information have you maybe not paid attention to? Which, which other clue do you need? Each class. So what are you going to have to do now? So, I think um, well, it's going to have to be properly ten times four because it, it would be... Uh... We have a culture of achievement and it's cool to achieve and our boys in particular are very competitive and support each other. If you've done 10 times 4 instead of 12 times 4, what could you then do afterwards? Another 8. Another 8. Do. That's another 2 times 4. Teachers expect the best of us, but we know we have to work hard ourselves to um, get good results in exams and stuff and things like that. Could you tell me what did you and your partner do? <laughs> we decided um, our song was about 5 minutes. Okay. And then we thought um, our prayer was 2 minutes. They know that they move from one thing to another quite quickly, but they also would know in my lessons that things would be linked to each other, and it helps them to know uh, what maths is going on in the room. Four years. Well done, that was excellent. You only had a slightly different answer. The teachers plan together as teams. They have a day term with non-contact to plan for the up-and-coming term, and they meet weekly to ensure that the children have a consistency of experience. I'm really pleased with the strategies that you have started to use. We plan together, which is very useful because we get to bounce ideas off each other, we get to think of things we wouldn't have otherwise thought of. I want you to remember that the estimate is a judgement, not a guess, and we find the clues and the information, and remember how we started to apply that into real-life situations. Thank you very much, you've all worked very hard today. So if we start by, first of all, just to say all the levelling was secure. Every piece Literacy consultant hard. Elizabeth Lloyd meets every term to discuss writing targets with two of the school's Year 6 teachers. The punctuation of sentences was limited. They were using the basic, the full stop, the capital letter, occasionally a question mark. I have said to some of my, my children, you've got to show me that you can actually use these pieces of punctuation because maybe they can, but unless you show the reader that you can use it, clearly you know, we, we can't mark that off as a you know, target achieved. Some of the children in my class have picked up on exclamation marks and they'll put three. Shocking uh, everybody all the way through. Other... Having Sunday someone so externally to come in and look at our work is incredibly useful because very often, even when I speak to my colleagues in the year group, Things will be thrown up by someone externally that we either had missed or we hadn't noticed. The openings, not very varied. We got a lot of then, then. So we need to introduce different ways of opening sentences for this one. I think maybe that could be a target, mm. sentence yeah, openings. We need to work on the openings with this child, don't we? And it's not target. moving Well, I'd say on. that was a year group. I would say yeah. across the year group, especially the poorer readers, to get that first sentence down. Once they have it, they'll carry on in that vein. They may be putting some of their openings up on the screen and saying, how can we make this better? My mum had told us don't open that door. I won't, but we did. We went through the big old door into our room. I was scared. Well, it's not very um, descriptive, is it? We do have to work harder on the writing than the reading levels, especially when they're moving from level four to level five. What would you give that? If you were the teacher and someone said, this is my opening paragraph, what do you think? I'll give it a level two because it's got, um, it's got good punctuation but um, not very um, good descriptive words because it says, um, we found a door but why can't they explain like, the door? Why can't they describe the door? We feel very strongly that it's not just a year six teacher's responsibility to get those children to a level four or above. So from the very beginning, 
all of our teachers are working towards improving the children's skills, particularly in writing. So tiptoeing, how might you be tiptoeing? Where might you be tiptoeing? And build up the atmosphere. You can't, with writing, suddenly cram for a test and deliver the goods. Writing has to come over a far longer period. So as part of that support, every teacher has writing as a target for their performance management. Why do you think you might be tiptoeing quietly? Because you don't want to be seen. Or? Because you don't know. We don't know what's out there in that forest, do we? You if you know. write a story, normally your teacher um, writes a comment. And you like read that comment, and if it's um, something that you haven't done, the next bit of writing you do, you think, oh, yeah, I've got to do that. So I'll use that in my next piece of writing. If I had to pick out one single thing that all these schools do, they know to a sub-level how the children are performing, and they know that the children are on trajectory. If I had any recommendation for people watching, adopt tracking is the first thing you should do. We meet every term myself and the class teacher, and we go through each individual child. We look at the progress they've made during that term, and because I am the consistent person each year, I end up with a full picture of where those children are and what we need to do. It's really exciting to open up your book and see what feedback the teachers have given to you, because um, you want to know what you got, um, what is actually um, the things that you must improve and gradually you get really, really good at your writing because of those targets. They're very aware independently of their personal targets and one of the strategies I would use is for them to put a wiggly line under anything they've done that they think has met their target. Tiptoeing silently, I saw an ancient abandoned house. I heard the front door creaking. As the door opened noisily, I saw what laid behind the door. It made my hands tremble and I felt someone tapping me, but was anyone there? Thank you, Stephen. That's really good. Well done for that. Teachers have the highest expectations of our children. These children have got to get to that level. We are about opening doors and offering our children choices. And unless they leave us able to write and be numerate, then we are actually closing doors. So we have an obligation to ensure that they reach those levels. Sometimes they come in at a very low level and we have to work much harder to get to that higher level, but we don't accept that we won't get there. I think it's important to get a level four or a level five because you really want to, especially when you're in year six, you really want to get up to a good secondary school and you want to have a really good report in the, in the end. If you don't really um, like learn nothing, then you're not going to be like you're not going to have a good job. Um, you won't be getting good money, and you just you wouldn't have a really good life.